He, uh, he took over from there on trace, trace landing cases. Mm -hmm. He has more trace landing cases than anyone in the world. Mm -hmm. um, then we have Dr. Jordan uh, that just, just came aboard. Mm -hmm. And we have Dr. Gibbons. And we have uh, uh, Dr. Uh, or not Dr. Larry Sikander. And yeah, good. I think it's a ta um, um, what, did I, what am I walking away with from here? Um, a driving. Yeah, don't make me walk. I'll be here forever if yeah, I have to walk away. anywhere. <laughs> um, some peace of mind. And a, really? Yeah, a real big peace of mind. Um, it's been, what, almost a year since I've seen you. Mm -hmm. We, so many changes in both our lives have occurred um, that I needed that physical contact. Yeah, yeah. To, to verify and to, um, well, whenever we get together, I get settled. Something gets in me, gets settled. I, I, it's like you come in prior to a change I'm going to go to through, mm -hmm. or right as I've just gone through one, mm -hmm. and I just went through one now. So by, um, you, you, it's like you come in and I get settled. So I'm going away very peaceful. Good. And what are you going away with? New ideas. Oh, let's hear it. Well, just ideas on documentation and mm -hmm. what I want to do. And also, like, well, I talked to Jordan, Dr. Jordan for a long time, and he gave me a lot of information. And uh, so, mainly what I'm walking away with Chocolates. is a larger understanding of humans. Really? Yes. Really? Because um, we've been interviewing these these people for for the documentary and also for your show. Wow. And and when we document them, we're asking them questions, specific scientific questions, and and or questions that are directly related to uh, the uh, subject that we're pursuing. That's a really vague description. Anyways, um, as we spend time with them, though, because we're spending time with them outside of the interview. Yeah, as people. We get to see them as people. And part of the paranormal thing we're asking what is what is abnormal about all this and the paranormal is such a normal part of these people's lives that's a good thought yeah yes but then also we get to see how their personal lives interact with the uh, pursuit of the paranormal yeah, well except and, and how it affects their lives mm -hmm. Or if it does at all. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I was thinking about, because, like, uh, I don't know if any of them consider, well, maybe maybe Dr. Um, Gibbons, uh, he, that the spook lights are somewhat paranormal. But then you take uh, Bob White, for instance. I don't know if he perceives it as or anything. It's like you said, this is what happened to me, you know. Here you got it. What can I tell you? It's just... Yeah, he just perceives it as, as something that's there. It's direct. It's yeah. real. He just yeah, perceives it as you, real. And you pick it up and you hold it. And how can you argue with that? To me, the paranormal is normal. Mm -hmm. And this everyday stuff that Normal people, people is paranormal to me. Yeah. Yeah. People stuff is paranormal. It's strange. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, to it me. doesn't. And I, and people I hang around with have that same sense. They they don't even some of them don't even know why they're on this particular planet, and this particular planet feels so foreign to them. Mm -hmm. They're they're from elsewhere. They're visitors here. They're it's like they got stuck here. And what did they do? 
to deserve to be stuck here and they take it as everyday stuff when they get into psychic abilities or or UFO ufology um, um, strange happenings levitation mind control spoon bending oh we you know been spoon spoon all that stuff time. is that <laughs> stuff is normal it's it is yeah yeah I, so to have you be on a on a, a quest for the paranormal of yeah. the paranormal talking to these it seems kind of um, an oxymoron yeah. but but you know now now um, now we we did a we did a clip with Catlin before she left us and one of the things she said was that she was surprised that uh, it, it, when she started out, you know, uh, I think we were her way of getting from point A to point B. So she just kind of fell into that. And so I think she thought that maybe, uh, and correct me if I'm telling this wrong, she thought that ever once in a while we would find a person and the majority would say, well, you know, get away from me. But then what she found, it was the other way around. Well, she she had expected that we'd run into crazy stuff because she'd read your, read your book, uh -huh. and uh, she just didn't uh, think that the people that we met were going to be so open, receptive, mm -hmm. yeah, and and so receptive, and that there would be so many people that we talked to that were yeah. interested, and most of them approached us some kind of way. So I'm, I'm sorry she missed this part, but you know we all at different stages of our evolution, and she she had to go home and play frisbee and rip her toe off. Yeah. Yeah. Now wasn't that fun? I am just pooped. So a friend of mine, Mike, brought this for me, and so I thought I better hang on to this because I am really pooped. I hope you had a really good time. Come see me next week, and uh, when we take you on another journey with the visit. Uh, of the person of high strangeness. So I'll see you next week. Bye. When God created heaven, he was dreaming Tennessee. I've seen the big sky of Montana, California by the sea. But when God created heaven, he was dreaming Tennessee. Your rich green velvet carpet travels far as the eye can see. Your rolling hills and valleys, home of the brave and free. Your bronze-hued Smoky Mountains, the Mississippi rolling on out to sea. When God created heaven, he was dreaming Tennessee. Your southern pride, your graciousness, still is there to see. When the sun first rose on Dixie, it bowed to Tennessee. The stars and stripes forever hold a state so dear to me. When God created heaven, he was dreaming Tennessee. Your graciousness still is there to see. When the sun first rose on Dixie, it bowed to Tennessee. The stars and stripes forever hold a state so 